Hi, I'm Jeremiah Harding, and I'm going to read you one of the most terrifying American laws ever written. This law is anathema to freedom, liberty, and life, and it has no modicum of help given to anyone but those in power, and no reason but to oppress from the people even the means for discussing rebellion. It reads like this. Whoever knowingly or willfully advocates, abets, advises, or teaches the duty, necessity, desirability, or propriety of overthrowing or destroying the government of the United States, or the government of any state, territory, district, or possession thereof, or the government of any political subdivision therein by force or violence, or by the assassination of any officer of any such government, or Whoever, with intent to cause the overthrow or destruction of any such government, prints, publishes, edits, issues, circulates, sells, distributes, or publicly displays any written or printed matter advocating, advising, or teaching the duty, necessity, desirability, or, or propriety of overthrowing or destroying any government in the United States by force or violence, or attempts to do so, or whoever organizes or helps or attempts to to organize any society, group, or assembly of persons who teach, advocate, or encourage the overthrow or destruction of any such government by force or violence, or becomes or is a member of or affiliates with any such society, group, or assembly of persons, knowing the purposes thereof, shall be fined under this title, or imprisoned not more than twenty years or both, and shall be ineligible for employment by the United States or any department or agency thereof, for the five years next following his conviction. If two, more per if two or more persons conspire to commit any offense named in this section, each shall be fined under this title, or imprisoned not more than twenty years or both, and shall be ineligible for employment by the United States or any department or agency thereof for the five years next following his conviction. As used in this section, the terms organizers and organized with respect to any society, group, or assembly of persons include the recruiting of new members, the forming of new units, the regrouping or expansion of existing clubs, classes, and other units of such society, group, or assembly of persons. This is how free speech was made a crime. Once we stop talking about talking and start talking about doing something, they can arrest us, given the text of this law. Me saying something like, the founders would have been shooting by now under this law, even though saying this is my first amendment, well, right, can get me arrested. This is a line they've drawn against our human right to expression, and eventually our human freedom itself. Unless we accept our roles as the slaves they want us to be, any movement or even talk of movement in the other direction is a threat because of this. You saw what they did to Anwar and Abdul Rahman al awlaki right? This government has already shown it's, that it's willing to kill citizens without trial or charge for this particular action. This, I think, is legitimately one of the most important political issues in America. No matter how far we get abolishing any element of the state by peaceful means, we will have this shit hanging over our heads. They can use this. They can use it to silence everybody. Maybe even me for bringing it up as a negative thing. Maybe you, the next time you say we should really do something about this. I implore denizens of the internet at large to get the courage to signal boost this. It is not small, and it diminishes us all to a state of abject silent servitude. Even sharing this video is an act of rebellion. Allow me to elaborate, highlighting points from a Wikipedia entry about this law better known as the Smith Act. The U.S. government has attempted on several occasions to regulate speech in wartime, beginning with the Alien and Sedition Acts of 1798. During and following World War I, a series of statutes addressed a complex of concerns that included enemy espionage and disruption, anti-war activists, and the radical ideologies of anarchism and Bolshevism, all identified with immigrant communities. Congressional investigations of extremist organizations in 1935 resulted in calls for the renewal of these statutes. Now notice the wording, the fact that this bill wrapped in the talks of being used for immigrant control, which is bad enough, 
is actually applicable to the whole of the nation and designed with intent to weed out political opposition. Yet not listing specifically what that is me means that this legislation becomes a sort of living document designed to pin down whatever might be the opposition to current officials at whatever time that might be, regardless of the nature of commentary. I tread dangerous territory even bringing this up at all. I could be in jail tomorrow. If you need evidence of this at all, look at those who've fallen victim to the legislation. You will not see a lot of violent men and women, but the political opposition. Communists, socialists, anarchists, minarchists, fascists, and anti-war people of all, of all senses were rounded up, concentration style, and either deported or just mistreated, depending on their immigrant status or their political beliefs. Now, agree with these people or not, you need to realize the implications of broad legislation like this, and you should also appreciate how far-reaching these implications are, with their huge amount of acute applicability. These words have historically been proven to work against those who simply don't toe the line. My existing internet presence has plenty of anarchist material on it, plenty enough to have this video blow up in my face. You see, it's urgent we get this abolished. It really is among the most important issues Americans these days could possibly face, and a most urgent matter for Americans to tend to. We really are talking about choke point control of the American populace by way of prosecuting thought crime and persecuting individuals for their political stance. Make no mistake, they are watching us with NSA spying programs. They have made their feelings on protests clear, essentially criminalizing them with bills like H.R. 347. They are all readied and highly mobile, with armored vehicles and military equipment patrolling American streets, and they can essentially arrest us all if they choose to, and if we let them, if we do not stop them. A Senate bill even authorizes feds to revoke American citizenships. This means that now this and the Alien and Sedition Acts now readily apply to all of us. We need to ask ourselves how much of this are we willing to take before we decide we've had enough, and how willing are we to say that we are done being subjects to this system when even that aims a gun at our heads. I say that it's better to die with a gun aimed at one's oppressors than it is to die old, distantly hearing the gunfire. And I think it's time to fearlessly oppose this and demand our freedom to speak out in whatever way we deem fit. They can pry our speech from us only when they take it from our lifeless bodies, but not until then. Ask what you're willing to do to defend your humanity. This is Jeremiah Talks, or Jeremiah Harding, signing out.